every one of you watching this screen. Look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of cushions. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hi, this is Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, toon talker, and I'm here with... Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Wow, the Cartoon Museum! Yes. We have to support that on Patreon. Um, yeah, that'd be a great idea, a great idea. Um, look, um, there's this book that's nearly 40 years old called Cartoonists of Australia. Wow. And it's a good book, except I don't like the cover. It's done by a guy called Franz Cantor. Huh. You don't like the cover, or no, you don't like the you no, don't like the don't person. Like the cover. And I just happen to have the original cover here. Yeah, you'll have to hold that up a bit yeah. closer because yeah, it's all so, crinkled. So it's the same, same picture, but we'll just bring it yeah. This is uh, actually that, my. That's, that's a terrible self-portrait. <laughs> yeah, this is, is when I was you? drawing in um, pencil. You're, you're drawing. Um, is that Malcolm Fraser in the background? Uh, like a, no, you're drawing it's an, an artist. artist drawing. Cartoon, it's, it's like a idealized cartoonist drawing. Uh, idealized with a pipe and, and stuff and like that. Who who draw? Air who Hawk just happened to draw Airhawk and stuff. Captain Justice and is Ginger? Fatty is Finn, Finn, Ginger, Ginger Fatty Finn. Warren Bunglers. Yeah. It sounds like you knew what was going to be in the book. Yeah. And what's in the rubbish bin? Anything important? No. Mm. What's that one? That's doorstop. Doorstop. It's the Thalidomide Cat by Phil Barlow. Oh, <laughs> really? And what's that at the window? Is that, what's that on the wall? What's that say? That's uh, Max and Min, oh, the weather people. Yeah, well, it's all there then. Torcan, okay. which is an anagram of Cantor. Is it? Mm. Cantor is Torcan backwards. Does he know that? <laughs> does, does Roger worked, Fletcher know that? He may have worked it out. Really? Yeah, but I never spoke to him about it. Um, a bit Have like, a look down down the actually, bottom. This actually, the cartoonist has big hands like David. And Michael Angelo's David. All right, well, th this but is that me. That doesn't look anything like you because you're too cute and you're not <laughs> cute at all. No, this yeah. is me trying to do a caricature of uh, the publisher. Oh, okay. This guy. Oh, Richard Ray. Okay. And um, have a look at this. This is back in the 80s. This is 1983. So this is when I was smoking, see? So yeah, there's only one, one the, cigarette in the whole ashtray. One of the it's tools... Like, well, yeah, well, I, I didn't smoke very much. But one of the tools of the artist was the uh, was the cigarette and the half-eaten green apple. Yeah, OK. All right, anyway, well. this, is, um, this is a book which was uh, published um, uh, in 1983, and the publisher... Um, contacted all of these cartoonists around Australia to get work for this book, um, work this, which he never returned. This Cantor spelt backwards. Yeah. So, um... Talkin. Yeah, so I'll just go... A lot of people remarked about this book, that this is... Um, that they picked it up when they were kids and they uh, uh, studied the uh, the work. Well, you see, this is, this is a rough, famous photo because there's 43 cartoonists in this. Yeah, and a couple of women, and there's some famous people here. We actually, yeah, Luce, Mercier. Um, should we? We actually should spend a bit of time with this. I think it's a, like you want to. There's um, Tony Rafty, Stan yeah, Cross. Yeah. Um. Who else? Percy Lindsay, Les Tanner. Yeah, there's a lot of people who we don't know. But anyway, look, it's too. It's just not the place. There's Dixon. It's not the place to go into it. Yeah, but, but have a look the... at the have a look at the clubber. Go down there. Show them the picture. Look at that. I don't know when that well, photograph was. 1964. They're all suits. Just see how how times have changed, right? I think it's a book launch. I think it's a book launch. Yeah, hilarious for a book launch. Yeah, but there's they're... there's Les Tanner, one of the greats. Yeah. Hilarious with their business suits. And there's um, Jim um, Russell. Yeah, there's Jim Russell. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, let's... Anyway, let's move on. Introduction. Let's move on. So, dedication. This book is dedicated to the late Ron Vivian, who was a great cartoonist. And it gets back to... Oh, there he is. Hart Amos, the first cab off the rank is Hart Amos and yeah. there he is. Hart Amos. Uh, he looks uh, like he's from New South Wales or, or Queensland with a shirt well, like that. Well when I was a teenager Hart Amos did um, Devil Dune. Yeah and he did in covers the too. Of Man Junior. That's a that's a chunky Batman isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Very chunky Batman. Yeah well that would be 1960s so he was chunky then Batman. Was he? Mm. <laughs> in Australia he was. Hang on what are we? Oh, here he we chunky are. Batman. And he's, he did Hawk. Okay. He did Air Hawk. Air Hawk. So Airhawk was um, done by, by different artists. Done by different artists. But this yeah. is um, well, let's close in on some of this uh, ink work here. Yeah. Look at that. That's quite exceptional, isn't it? A beautiful shadow. Yeah. Um, the hand. Look, even the hand. When you draw hands that just just are cropped off by the by the camera by the framing of the uh, composition. Um, a good artist draws the complete hand so that you get something that doesn't look it's cro like it's cropped off. Yeah, but a lot of artists have all these methods of getting out of drawing hands because they don't like drawing hands. It's well, most do. people actually, because I teach drawing, most people have a problem drawing faces and hands. Right? I thought face would be the easiest. No, absolutely not. That'd so you've got to be able to draw the face from different angles. That's the Luger. Yeah. yeah, so everything, it's very, very important to be able to draw hands and faces convincingly, especially for comics, because you're dealing with um, well, open compositions in all of the panels, which means that they're cropped off, they're cut off like, like, a, like a camera. And this is his illustrative work. He's even signed that one. Yeah, we, that's a bit suggestive. Oh, yeah, but well, hang on. Have a look at some more suggestive stuff. <laughs> Well, he did, stuff for, bikinis. he did stuff for Man Magazine. Oh, there's a spacecraft. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. And these are duotones. Duotones mean they're two colours reproduced in, uh, usually in ma uh, men's magazine, which was cheap printing. Yeah. Like Man Junior or something. Adam. Oh, I've, got, I've got to show magazines. you this tiger. This tiger's really, like, yeah. he's really getting it, getting it out, isn't he? Yeah. And of course, what's up here? And there's a mustachoid hero, pre-Devil Dune. Yeah, that's right. He did Devil Doom. Yeah, square-chested blokes. Yeah, and there's there's someone in a, a war-torn situation. Yeah, and as you move across, that tiger's hands, brilliant, isn't it? Look at yeah, that. It's really that's a beautiful tiger. It is, and he's really yeah, making a meal of that. There on yeah, the it, it, he's going. He's going for the bruteness. Yeah, the brute strength, not the the prettiness of the tiger. Yeah. And that, is, well, what else can we talk about? Uh, Hart, do you know anything else about Hart Amos? No, except uh, you should check out his work on Devil Dune. Okay, quite yes. Comics. Yes, it was, yeah. This is Jim Banks, of course. He started uh, Ginger Mex in the 30s. Yeah. And he had a very iconic, you know, use of this uh, brush. Thick yes. And thin. Maybe close up on that brush stroke. You know, which um, the thick brush strokes indicate curvature usually yeah. in um, in cartoons. And the strip's still going, done by Jason Chatfield at the moment. Yeah. So, so this, some is, of this is caricature 30s, looks like 30s or 40s sort of caricature. Yeah. And this is uh, a this Sunday. Is, again, this is how we, Australia was very cheap uh, in that the comics were either black and white in the, in the Sunday papers or in this case it was two colour. Yeah. Or three color black red and yellow that's it that's all and to get pink if you zoom right in they would have had to use um a half tone pattern of red dots okay okay so cheap you know so um, black's a color black's a color black is uh yeah cmyk k is yeah. black that's a beautiful um picture he's playing the mouth organ and the music is coming out yeah that's not for the newspaper, by the way. That was for a book. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Because they never had colour in a newspaper. Now, Phil Barlow. This is Phil Barlow. Of course, he did Zooniverse. It's one of his characters, well, the well, hang on. man. Let's introduce you. There's Phil. Well, you can't see that. That's very blurry. Yeah. There he is there. He looks it's very introspective. Cool. This is some of Phil's uh, uh, pens, uh, brush. I, I believe he used brush at that stage. Yeah. He, 
he's very competent in pen and brush, but you can see they're beautifully done. Little exercises, this one in particular. This was in the 80s, of course, so. Yeah. <laughs> was, well, that's, uh, that's, was she empowered? She was empowered yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. He did extraordinary comics. Very prolific. We, 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 must, do, we must do a thing on him. Um, yeah. And he's probably one of... This the... is from his sketchbook. Yeah. We well, might have a look at, uh, at Phil's uh, other sketches from other things as well later on. Um, he's still around? This guy's still around? Yeah, he's still working on Zooniverse. Yes, and... He... And you can support him on Patreon too. Look for yeah, uh, Zooniverse. And didn't he work on Jen? Uh, the the animation series did he worked on Ghostbusters the real Ghostbusters and yeah. Godzilla and Men in Black yeah and he's won a slew of Emmys well, there you are. It's for tough his being work. a cartoonist look that's what you got to look like yeah it's his business card really tough being a... this is the David Bowie period he went through <laughs> we all went through David Bowie periods ground control to Major Tom it's lovely work. Okay, yeah. Ken Emerson, did you ever meet Emerson? Did, did you ever meet him? No. So he did the Warren Bunglers. Yeah, well, look at this. It's from reference. Yeah, well, a lot of these uh, cartoonists are. He also did On the Rocks, which is about early Australia, mm. a comic strip. Mm. Yeah. So to add, you know, even they're, they're very stylized cartoon characters. Let's zoom in on there. there um, there's a koala. A kangaroo and a is that a wombat or a possum or something? It's a wombat. Wombat, yeah. and you know he he would research it very similar to Calvin and Hobbes. Okay. In terms of its um, you know beautiful uh, combination of cartoon and well researched um, drawings, mm. so beautiful, beautiful stuff, yeah. And this is on the rocks, which is the yeah. And what are the, he did a bulletin cover, uh, uh, the, the the insert into the bulletin. Ah, it's a gag there with its own animals just don't seem to like the postman. Yeah, yeah. and look, so it's, it's a, a gag on. He'd been bitten yeah. by not a turtle, turtle. But by a turtle. Yeah, just, you look at the speed lines behind the turtle. Yeah, he's real angry, isn't he? Yeah. Well, that's so cute. Um, I love it. Having having um, speed lines on a turtle Ooh, is a joke, a is a joke in itself, isn't it? Yeah, so this is the iconic um, character from Warren Bunglers that you'd probably be familiar with, the little um, yeah. uh, koala bear. That's that, a beautiful that look koala bear. They perfect for animation, like they're all chunky style, you know. Let's not even go there. That's like the Yoram Gross stuff. Oh, okay. Blinky Bill. Hal English. This is Hal English, a, a beautiful uh, illustrator um, of the time. Very. Let's have a look. There's these iconic... Uh, um, Monica and the um, the work that he had with some um, yeah because a lot of cartoonists did illustration work in magazines so, I mean because if you pick up a magazine from yeah. the 50s uh, and 60s there's just so much illustration in it and yeah. that all got replaced with photography and um, yeah. yeah well the, in in the early days of magazines of course um, there wasn't many. There wasn't very um, many photographs because yeah. of the, the, the printing process wasn't yes. able to reproduce them. Well, there's a lot of work here. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful uh, brush style, pen style actually. Yeah. Could, why did? How was it pen? Look at those cross hatches. Yeah. Those hatch lines there. Beautiful, strong stuff. So that's Hal English. Yeah. Roger Fletcher was a, uh, a very prolific um, cartoonist. He did um, st uh, Staria, Star Staria yeah, and, and Torcan for many years. Torcan was a Torcan was a um, uh, I guess it's a barbarian in the style of Can Tor. Yeah, <laughs> a barbarian in the style of um, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. And uh, really beautifully illustrated. A lot of um, well, he did a lot of action stuff. A lot of action stuff, but you know, I mean, he handled the exposition quite well because you have to explain a lot of these uh, setups 
and uh, what you know, all of the motivations well, of the characters. Ran for what, and he wrote thirty years or something. Didn't yeah, it? He, very and he was running. a. You know, not many people know this, but he was a really accomplished uh, storyteller. He's uh, also an accomplished guitarist. Is he? I and didn't a very know that. accomplished um, um, three-wheeled motorbike rider. Yeah. This uh, Staria is kind of like the Roger Fletcher um, Barbarella, yeah. with but m uh, a little bit more uh, Star Wars oriented. Yeah. So he was quite um, yeah. skilled at doing doing well, the he's, he's interior across, shots of he's, spaceships yeah, with all going, of their clean lines. Yeah, he's going across and space. He's going across um, um, two generations. Mm. You know. Now Max Foley. Now Max, he, you knew Max. Uh, yeah, I worked with him. Very the, prolific. Uh, at the Australian. I saw his stuff everywhere, and it looked yeah. like he could work fast. Really work fast, like he could dash off never, a picture. Well, I'm sure he could. But this, I mean, he had a beautiful um, technique for Max and Min, which I absolutely loved. Um, these are some. I mean, they're very effortless characters. Effortless. You know, they look so simple. And yet, so eloquent. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's Tibby the Lion. There's Max there working yeah. at his desk. Um, let's see if he's got Max There's and Min. Max There's Max and Min. And it was about the weather Max people. Yeah. yeah. Max, the maximum temperature. That was in the, the Sun Herald, I think. Yeah. When he was working at the uh, Fairfax. Just some of his um, commercial illustrations were very popular at the time, that style. This is some of uh, Max and Min's. It should, I've always thought there should have been a book to complete the whole story of the Max and Min because it was sort of like, when reading it when I was a kid, I never read, by the way, I never read comics in the Sunday comics. Because? But I, I didn't like them. I didn't like the format. But I did like Max and Min and I did love um, Max's stuff because it at the time it looked very modern. So even and very contemporary, and the story uh, reminded me a lot of Wizard of Oz. So even as a child, you're a snob. <laughs> so, yeah, and these are some of his uh, little spot cartoons. Well, that's a political cartoon. That's, that's, there's a political cartoon, yeah. That's, a, that's a terrible, a um, um, a terrible whistle, but a good um, phrase. Yeah. This and is Cindy a, was a sexy strip. It was a sexy strip. Yeah. Very cool. And he, did you do ch Chesty Blonde? I don't know. I think you did Chesty we'll Blonde. To, which we'll just... have to interview him one day. Yeah. This is Eric Jolliffe. Eric Jolliffe, of course, we've done a, um, a book bite yeah. on Eric Jolliffe or on, on one of his uh, one of his books. Um, this is a great What can gag. you say this about that? Gag. His... pulling him through the other hole. Yeah, see, I never read the gags. I always look at the artwork. Well, he was, he, the he was right in the artwork. Beautiful watercolors. He was um, very well researched. He walked all around uh, the Australia. Bush, yeah, yeah. and um, he lived with Aboriginals and stuff. He's yeah. an Englishman who came over here, fell and, in love with the lifestyle, yeah. and and he just spent a long time drawing details. Yeah, but what, you can what, find just show that picture, for instance. Just yeah, there's, look at that there. beautiful tree. Yeah. My God, look at that scene. That's magnificent. And so he's a very, very accomplished um, well, artist. And very prolific. We all grew up with him. Yep. There's a comic strip he did on Sandy Blight. Sandy Blight. His drawing of Aboriginals, he came into, when he was in his later years, he was criticised by um, yep. by uh, uh, pro progressive Aboriginal groups, and yep. it really broke his heart. But it was a generational problem, you know. This is Now, who's uh, this bloke? This is France Cantor. Oh, okay. This is one of France's uh, pen, pen works. Well, who'd you pinch cards. that off? Who'd you pinch that off? Who'd I pinch that off? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, it just looked like someone else's work. No, I was it, exper it, I experimented a lot with different It's too materials. good for you, isn't it? Isn't that too good for you? There's Johannes Bjorki Peterson. Oh, Johannes. That's the pencil I've never heard him called Johannes. Australian Penthouse magazine. Now, is this when you were young and broody? That's me, young and broody. Yeah, and this is when you were young and, and not so broody. Hang on, where's the other picture coming up here? No, I'm still young and broody. You're still very opinionated well, back then. I don't know about young, but you're still broody, yeah. And this is nice. This is a beautiful, this was for a pitch poster for um, Paul Power. 
okay. for a uh, movie, an That's animated great. movie. That's great. The this hits, is right. Elmo and the Rock Warrior. And, um, what happened to the movie? The characters. Um, like a lot of oh, well, they pitched. That's, oh, that's a cover of um, Ink Spot. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that. Oh, Ink Spot. I see. Yeah, Ink Spot Ink. Three. Yeah, this is a video cover. That's a great Night way of the Living Dead. That's a great way. You've got the weight on that arm and that. It's mm. really good. Very good. Channeling Jeff Jones a little bit. This is for a um, Athena Star Woman book on. Um, oh yeah, Star Girls. Yep. Uh, what was it called? Star something. Something stars. Are you political? Thank you, lucky stars. These are political stuff. Yeah, be careful on this. Is that's a uh, Australian Playboy illustration. Yeah, Bob Hawk. Oh, Bob Hawk. You can see now. And yeah. this is your ad. Down a bit. Is that you with the um the the? Is that a portrait of you with the thing over your shoulder? Yeah, we can't show that. No, we can't. This is no, a Playboy no. illustration. Yeah. Pencil for a Playboy illustration on um, the music. So there's Rene Gaia. Yeah. This is like all the music stars of that era. This is another illustration where we show part of it. There's a pencil. I like the way you've stretched it out, almost yeah. like a scroll. And the muscle work, let's have a look at that muscle work on that leg. This goes, it's really pretty impressive. Well, yeah, it's turning the yeah. human anatomy into the... Um, well, that arm, look at that arm. It's just the power of that arm. Yeah. You've, um, yeah. It looks, anyway. I reckon it's a bit better than yeah, uh, Freshetta. I, I think a it's lot a bit pencils. better than Freshetta, you know. Frazetta? No, it's not. So this is Neil Madison, yes. Corsetic Cliff. Cliff yeah, was another he, uh, comic strip I, I grew up with. He did lots of stuff. Really he had simple. pictures of babies in wombs talking about when they were born. There we are. Yeah. Um, That's he's funny. Been that was long. popular. That was very popular. Yeah. People quoted this. See, pulling the cord, so I'm ready. Yeah. It's a great idea, isn't it? And this character here, which was everywhere, used to see that everywhere. Nurse Docs. She yeah. was tough. So, very popular cartoonist. He also, he did political stuff, business yeah. stuff. He also illustrated um, um, stuff on um, walls in, in hospitals, yeah. I remember going this, in and taking this my one. This is one. Yeah. Lift correctly. That's a health and safety poster yeah. for hospitals. Yeah. And we would see that in hospitals, and I've been in enough hospitals to know. Uh, what sort of hospitals? <laughs> All kinds of hospitals. Oh, okay. Now, Sid Nichols oh, was, was a great artist. He was a sick kid. He Sid was, Nichols. You were a sick kid. What was wrong with you? Oh, don't worry about it. No, we'll do that for another time. Okay. Sid Nichols. He did Fatty Finn. Yeah. And there's Fatty. Yeah, he's not that fat, is he? <laughs> oh, I guess maybe he was a fat baby. I don't know. But, I mean, he did pirates and all that sort of stuff, but he yeah, could he really draw like hell, I reckon. Yes, but have a look at that. Look, it's a beautiful church. It's St. James in Sydney. And have a look at this. And this Let's is one of his up. wartime uh, propaganda yeah. pieces. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely work. Yeah. And th this is his colour work. And this he, is he his was a, colour work. He, he also was, was his own publisher too. I think he, he published himself too. Right. So this was, I mean, the growing up... The magic boomerang was sort yeah, of pretty popular. You know, galleons on fire, pirate ships and... You know, all of that, arr, arr, boys' own arr. adventures. This is the sort of um, stuff that we grew up with uh, in the 1950s. 60s. No, 50s, really. Well, then I had reprints. Yeah. And Lloyd Piper was one of the many, well, there were a few uh, Ginger Meg artists, but yeah. he did other stuff. Catman! Let's have a closer Catman. <laughs> he, looks, he looks funny. Catman. Mr. No Face. New Endeavor. Jamboree. Okay, so um, we're getting there. Planet Man. It's a chunky brush style. Very nice. Wolf. And another one. Peep down. Peep down. Piltdown. Oh, I think that was Piltdown. It was Piltdown. a joke on Piltdown Man. Ah. Oh, I think that's what... I didn't get it. Oh. Now, Ron Vivian, who the book is dedicated to, was obviously... Yep. Ah, look at that. 
that is a beautiful, um, very linear, very simple, but, um, beautiful line work. Bad repos, but bad repos. Yeah, reproductions not not too good. I believe these are from newspapers. Well, they're from the Daily Telegraph for right. all you Sydney people. It's, a, it's one really of very elegant cartoons. Look at those characters, beautiful. Stuff. Look at this the Labor Party dressing room. Ned Kelly, mm -hmm. Abe Lincoln, what's that? Will Rogers, Harry Tremont, they're all American style, but they're bringing the Australian one in. Talking about. Crooks. Well, no, talking about the well, Americanization, Americanization of, of, of the American Labor politics Party. with you. Yeah. So this is his black and white work for Ginger. Yeah. Oh, you can tell he's nice channeling um, banks here with the thick and thin lines. Yeah. Look at that. Still very, very elegant. So he... Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, Monty. Monty Wed. There's Monty. You can see him with his little moustache. Now, Monty did, uh, of course, Ned Kelly and... Um, uh, what was the other guy he did? Captain Midnight? No. He did Captain Midnight. Captain he did Midnight. a lot of things. Um, these are Sunday... Sunday. Um, yeah, this is a famous... This is from yeah. a famous um, etching yeah. of Ned Kelly, which was done in the 1880s. And it's pretty photography because we didn't have photography then yeah. in the newspapers. He also did a book on... Actually, he was an expert on... On um, militaria. Yeah. And, they, and he also did um, Bold Ben Hall. And he did the, which the is uh, Super Flying Fun Show. Yeah. Was, and he invented... Oh, my goodness. You mentioned this to me. Look yeah. at this. My God, we got to do a thing on this uh, this guy. He was Dollar so, Bill. He Dollar was Bill. so iconic, Dollar Bill. Yeah. In 1966, when we transitioned from pound, shillings and pence, which made no bloody sense to anybody, to... Um, Dollars and cents. So we went Let's decimal, the screen decimal of currency. Under arrest. Well, look at the camera angle. You know, it's very good. Nice. Very dramatic. Yeah. You know, from the floor up. You know. Yeah. So his um, panels were extremely detailed, and that's yeah. it. Well, that's what's it. on the back page? Let's have a look at the back page. Oh, it's just yeah, just wallpaper. So um, this is cartoonists of Australia. Let's. Uh, I don't know, you may be able, because this was published in 1983 yeah. by VIEW, which I believe is the publishing arm of the printer. Um, you may be able to find this on eBay or... Um, in any like second-hand a, shop that's still, second -hand still shop. going anywhere. Yeah. Not many of them left. Okay, well, this is... Um, this is uh, well, this book this is basically... Is, uh, uh, this basically is like a, a, a preview to... Each one of these artists, which we'll go into late, later yeah, on it's, in, in longer films. Exactly, yeah. yeah. All right, this is Franz Cantor and Jim Bridges saying, See you later. See you later. Bye bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.